Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and today we're in Matthew chapter 10. Left off last time at verse 27, so we'll pick it up right there. So get your Bible, open it up to Matthew chapter 10 as we continue our verse by verse study through the Bible. And if you want to do that with me uh, even more than right now, you can do that at the Scripture Verse by Verse website, which is at thebibleversebyverse.com. If you've never studied the entire Bible, all 31,000 plus verses, you can do it there. Not just once, but you can do it three complete, almost four. And all you have to do is choose the series, choose the book of the Bible, choose the section, click and listen. Or I recommend, if you haven't done it, begin in the beginning, the book of Genesis chapter 1. Going to take you a while because it is an in-depth Bible study. It's not a survey by any means. And go through the whole Bible, all 66 books. It's a great discipline. It'll change your life because it's the Word of God. And there are several people who are doing that, probably even more than what I know. And uh, they all have the same, they all have the same response. It's great. They're loving it. It takes discipline, but spending time with God is worth it. Father, we pray that as we spend time with you, you would bless us as you always do. Sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. Matthew 10, 28. Jesus said, And fear not them who kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. In other words, Jesus is saying, Don't fear man, because all they can do is kill your body. And that means absolutely nothing if you're a Christian. Because it can't touch your soul. And they can't stop you from going to heaven. And they can't take away your eternal life. All they do is buy you a ticket to paradise. So never compromise what is right in the eyes of God to prolong your life. Jesus says, don't fear those who can kill your body. Fear the one who can destroy body and soul in hell. And that doesn't mean annihilate because it won't be annihilated. Destroy means ruin. So what's Jesus saying? He is saying the only thing, the only thing that you should fear, really, when it comes right down to it, is burning in hell. Everything else is temporary. Every other unpleasant thing that you might have to endure is temporary. And certainly, every unpleasant thing, every painful thing that you must endure is minor when compared to the horrible and endless suffering a sinner who rejects Christ will experience in hell. Nothing is even in the same zip code as hell when it comes to being horrible. Stay out of hell at all costs. Stay out of hell. Just stay out of hell. Whatever you do. 29. Jesus said, Are not two sparrows sowed for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. Not many people pay attention to a little sparrow. I got to say, I don't. I'm sure they fly by me all the time. I'm sure they land in front of me all the time. You know what? I don't even look at them. And if I do, I, it doesn't even register. Who cares? It's a sparrow. Back in, back in those days, people, the poor people used to buy, I think it was two, two sparrows for a penny. 
Not much meat. But not many people paid attention to little sparrows. But they sure are important to God. In fact, when a little sparrow dies, one that no one ever even knew existed, its, its death is a big deal to God. So he says in 30, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Again, you thought sparrows were worthless. One strand of hair, one strand of hair is very worthless to people. But God takes the time to notice it. If it's part of you, in other words, then it's important to him. He, he every hair on your head, every hair on your arm, every, everything, every skin cell, that is in your body is important to God because it's a part of you. Anything that's a part of you is important to God. That's how important you are to him. Verse 31. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Obviously, God did not send his eternal son in the form of a bird so that all birds could go to heaven. God cares about each and every little bird, but he came, became a human being and he died for human beings so that we human beings, even though we had sinned against him, turned our back on him, can go to heaven. Think about that. If God was willing to do that for us, then he must love us very much. And that's why we don't have to be afraid of anything. 32. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father who is in heaven. In other words, if we are not ashamed of Jesus before those who reject him in this world, if we are not afraid we are not ashamed, I should say, to say what Jesus said. That said, he is the only way to heaven. That's why the, he is the only way to have eternal life. If we're not ashamed to tell people that there's only one way to avoid hell, and that's repenting and receiving Christ as Lord and Savior. If we're not ashamed of Jesus before the Muslims, before the Hindus, before the New Agers, before the intellectuals of the world who explain Christ and the Bible away, if we're not ashamed of him in front of this world, before those who reject him, then Jesus himself will tell the Father that we belong to him after we die. If you're not ashamed of him, that's a sign that you're saved. You don't earn your way to heaven by not being ashamed of Jesus. But if you are saved because you've repented and received Christ, then the Spirit of God lives inside of you, and one of the outworkings of that is that you won't be ashamed of Jesus. See? And so you get to heaven because you're saved, because you know Christ. That's just the byproduct of knowing Christ. So at some point, and in some way, before someone, someone who is genuinely saved, will say, I belong to Christ. I'm not ashamed. That sort of thing is important to Jesus. 33. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Now, Jesus is not suggesting that there won't be occasional failures to speak up for him when you have an opportunity. He's not saying you will never blow an opportunity to speak up for him. This is talking about someone who never says, I belong to Christ. It's, it's talking about someone who 
may have confessed Christ at one time, but then later renounced him. It's talking about that person too. If we say, I don't know Jesus. Nope. Well, he's my way to heaven, like I heard old Joel Osteen say one time on national television. He's my way, which means don't get angry at me. You can have a different way if you want. See, I'm not, I'm not narrow-minded. I'm not a bigot. He's my way. <laughs> I hate it when I hear people say that and they, they profess to be Christians, especially preachers. Good Lord. How disgusting is that? If we say, I don't know Jesus, or we water it down, he's my way, suggesting that you might have a different way. Don't get angry at me. Well, you know what? Jesus is going to say, I want your way. I want your way. You didn't know me. You didn't confess the real me that I'm the only way. So I don't know you either. I have no idea who you are. And that's going to be a hard pill to swallow come judgment day. You see, Jesus isn't going to do that. Well, he just said he would. He also says elsewhere, those who say to me, Lord, Lord, on judgment day, and he responds by saying, I never knew you. Depart from me to everlasting fire. I never knew you. You didn't know me. I don't know you. I have no idea who you are. Get out of here. Verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Jesus came to earth to die and thereby bridge the gap that existed between sinners and God. Jesus did not come to make everyone get along. That is a perversion of the message of Christ. He did not come to earth to make all people get along. He came to fill in the gap between sinners and a holy God. And actually, as he suggests here, the natural result of some people receiving Christ and some rejecting Christ, the natural result of that is, start, is strife. There's an enmity between the saved and the unsaved because one has the devil for their father and one has God. One uses the Bible as their guidebook. The others do not. They're, they're, they're polar opposites, the saved and the unsaved. The unsaved do not feel comfortable with Christians who live and speak the truth. It makes them feel guilty. Reminds them that they're in trouble with God. No matter how hard they try to Forget it. But the unsaved have never liked the holy Christian, and they never will. The unsaved have never liked a preacher who proclaims the pure word of God, and they never will. 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and the man's foes shall be they of his own household. See, the connection between a Christian and Christ, a saved person and Christ, that connection is stronger than the connection between that Christian and a lost family member. A Christian who wants to stay connected to Jesus will refuse to go along with sin to please anyone, including a husband, including a wife, including any kind of a family member. And that often leads to strife because the unsaved person doesn't get it and certainly does not like it. And I'm out of time. If you want to be a part of this ministry, I'd certainly appreciate that. Remember, Scripture verse by verse has been a listener-supported ministry for over 33 years, which means I give out the word straight, and I trust that God will raise up people who truly love his word and want to be a part of this ministry. You can be by praying for me, praying for the word of God. Also, clicking the donate button at the top of the front page at thebibleversebyverse.com and prayerfully give us the Lord may lead. See you next time.